Five things I wish I knew uh, when I graduated. What would they be? Okay. Number one, don't worry as much. Um, everybody who graduates, especially if you're like medicine, dentistry, I think, veterinary and stuff, uh, they very soon realise that they now are at the bottom of the food chain once again. <laughs> in university, you climb up in the five years, one, two, three, four, five, and right at the top, you say, yeah, I've done it, I'm a dentist now, and then you get into the real world, and you're right at the bottom as a trainee dentist again. And then you start to worry, stuff like, am I good enough? Uh, do I know enough? You come into situations or clinical scenarios that you never thought about before, and you know, it's, it's really weird, you get this title of, of a doctor, and that can also be a very big problem for some people. And it used to be a big problem for me because you kind of feel like you should know all the answers. But that's not true. But when you graduate in the field of medicine or dentistry, you need to realize that um, this is something I wish I knew. You don't have to have all the answers right then and then. You are at the starting point of your journey. People think that you graduate, you should have all the knowledge at that point. No, your journey starts at the moment of graduation. You are then gonna be exposed to different clinical scenarios that you've never seen before. And they're gonna stump you. And if you don't get out of your comfort zone and get uh, able to ask people quite quickly, uh, oh, what would you do here? Or oh, I've got this scenario, what are you expected to do? You can very easily start living a life where you get this thing called imposter syndrome as you start feeling like maybe I'm not good enough. When in reality, all the thing there is is a bit of experience that you're lacking. That bit can be very, very, very strange. And I see a lot of graduates nowadays who graduate and they have that underlying anxiety that, wait a second, maybe I'm not good enough. Because it's really weird. I've seen now over the last 10 years that there's almost like two different types of dentists that graduate. The really ultra confident dentist, as in he thinks he or she thinks he knows everything, you can't tell them nothing. That's it. They think they've done it. And then you get other camp which I used to be in, where I'm still in, I think. Or you get this other camp that, you know, I think maybe I'm still in where you know you don't know all the answers and it's the fear that wait I don't know everything that kind of keeps knocking your confidence down. But medicine dentistry is one of the fields where constantly knowledge has been added to the bank. More evidence-based stuff it comes out daily. There's no way you can keep up to date with everything. So a lot of it comes down to experience. So don't worry as much. It all comes with time. I think this generation now, or we're used to everything happening very instantly, but it doesn't work like that with dentistry medicine. It will take time, it will take experience and it will come to you if you care. Just because you worry, that's I see it as a good thing, it means you care. And that's the number one thing I think everybody wants in a doctor, is somebody who cares. Number two, networking. Everything of our university has to do with networking. You have to network, you have to get out of your bubble. Dentistry and medicine, they're, they're a very, very small world. Everyone kind of knows each other. The more you get to know people, the more you get introduced to opportunities, the more people you have in your circle to ask. So if you've got a, a, somebody in your circle who's like an oral surgeon, a periodontist, endodontist, especially when you're young and you just graduate, you're coming into contact with scenarios like that you've never had before. These guys gold mines of information. You have to network. And don't worry about asking these questions. A lot of these guys who've been through it know exactly what it was like years ago when they graduated. And they're more than happy to pass that knowledge on. Always network. It'll make your life so much easier. Another thing that I wish I really knew or I really, really paid attention to, and this is my third point is, you are on your own path. You cannot imitate or try and copy somebody else's path. Everyone's been on their own journey. It's very easy to think, okay, um, so-and-so has done this, so therefore, in five years' time, I must have this. You don't know what their journey was about, and it was definitely not like your journey. People get lost in this game of cat and mouse, as in, by X day, I should have this, it should be like this, or so-and-so had this. Completely different life, completely different circumstances. And when they don't get that, I mean, it's good to have goals, but you need to be on your own journey. You know, uh, a lot of the time when you graduate, you don't know what you want to do. So you start asking people or you start copying people around you. Somebody might go and do a degree, you know, in endodontics and, and, and the like, root canals. Somebody might want to go and be an orthodontist. It's very, very tempting just to copy them. 
because you think that, oh, I don't want to be alone, only numpty not doing nothing, uh, let's go do something else, what's everyone else doing? Or they're all doing this, oh, I'm just going to go jump and do that as well. No, you, you, you get even more lost. You have to be really true to yourself. What is it that you like? And it's okay not to know. I know you just graduated or you're just fairly new a few years in the game. It's okay not to know. So with me, for it was very, very important to get a very good baseline for everything. Before you start to specialize, have a good knowledge, a good foundation of every aspect of dentistry. You know, orthodontics, oral surgery, perio, root canals. Only then you'll get to know what bits you'd like, what bits you don't like. Because it's, ve it's very easy if you find something difficult to avoid it altogether. That's a big mistake. Because you're always sub subconsciously be hiding from that aspect of dentistry. You need to actively go, really pursue what you're most afraid of. Once you conquer that, you'll be so much more confident as a dentist. I remember for me, I knew when I graduated I did not have enough experience extracting teeth. And I really had no experience in minor oral surgery. Taking wisdom teeth out, putting sutures in, raising flaps, none of it. Uh, university maybe did one. So I knew that was going to be something that's going to bug me for a while. That's one of the main reasons why I did a hospital job. Took a year out, did a max fact job, where you get to pull out teeth almost on a daily basis. And not just any teeth, really difficult scenarios. So somebody was sometimes medically compromised and got to do a lot of on-call as well. Seeing that, I've been exposed to that sort of environment. You know, you chase after the fear, uh, the worry that you have. And once you conquer that, you think, okay, I'm happy with that. What's the next thing? For me, the next thing was uh, orthodontics. I knew a lot of my knowledge in orthodontics at university was lecture-based. We did no real practical orthodontics. So when the opportunity came uh, to start doing orthodontics, when the whole thing about Invisalign became more mainstream, personally, I knew that I could use this system, but do I really understand how these teeth are moving? Do I understand the biology, the fundamentals? Probably not. So I took time out and uh, I worked for an orthodontist for almost a year, one day a week. Shadowed him, saw all the cases that he was doing, completely annoyed him with a million questions a day. And only then I thought, okay, now it's time to do a postgraduate certificate which I'm just about to complete. And now I'm thinking, okay, now I think I've got good foundation knowledge in this. Now I might go and do, you know, Invisalign. But then again, this is my own path. Your path will might not be like this at all. You might like oral surgery and done 50 extractions. I think, you know what, that's a piece of cake. And you're interested in root canals. But you have to be really true to yourself that you're not copying somebody. You're not going to just think that so-and-so did this or if I do this I'll be in the same boat. No, life doesn't work that way, it's not that simple unfortunately. I'll be sure else. One other thing, and this is going to be very very cheesy, but it's taken me a good few years to realise this. Happiness is a choice, it actually is a choice. A lot of the time I remember at university thinking, you know what, I can't wait to graduate, can't wait to become a dentist and his life is going to be like this and we're going to do this, and we're going to go and do this. And then graduation hits and you think, oh no, uh, only if I do this now, in two years time it'll be like this. And then you stress that and then you go and do this. And then you reach that point and it's, you know, it's a, it's a never ending, never ending circle. You've got to be happy with the, with the moment you're in. Because you will never get the moments back and you'll realise, looking back, it was the small things that made you happy. It wasn't the big things. Don't wait until the end and think, oh, if I get to this goal, I'm going to be happy. Be happy with what you have right now. It's that simple. Be happy with the environment you're in right now. Be happy with the people you have right now. There'll be all these people in your life teaching you a lesson. All this absorb, especially from clinicians, even from nurses. I've learned a lot from over the years from experienced nurses, tips and tricks. But the whole aim is don't wait for a moment to think that happiness is coming. If you choose to be, or if you really wanted to, you can really pick something in your life right now to be really happy about, and then just be happy. Sounds cheesy, but deep down, I think we all know that's true. And tip number five, this is something you learn very, very quickly. Uh, tip number five, it's not all clinical. Most of dentistry is 
relationships, I would say, relationships, relationships that you have with your patients, relationships that you have with the staff, the principal, the dental nurses, the specialists that you deal with, the hospital. Most of dentistry is about relationships. You could be the most technically fantastic dentist on earth. If you don't get along with your patients or you don't know how to make somebody comfortable or you're really annoying your nurse or you're just being a brat, no one cares about your dentistry. Patients will not care. Dentistry is a very, very, very personal field. Patients need to know they can trust you. They need to know that uh, you're a very caring person because nobody's gonna let you in their mouth otherwise. That sounds very weird, by the way. <laughs> that sounds very weird. Let's do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know how else to phrase that. Yeah, it is true, you know. You know, would you let somebody in your mouth you don't trust? No, it's just, it's, it's very personal, you know what I mean? Well, you know, years ago, I was writing my personal statement, you know, for university. And, you know, they said the opening title of your personal statement really needs to, you know, hit with a bang. Because they're going to read hundreds of these personal statements and you need to stick out. And uh, I think what I'll do is uh, I'll, uh, I'll find a nice quote with a smile or with dentistry or something. I'll put it in there and I'll blow their minds away. I did find one quote that stuck with me, though. Uh, it didn't blow my mind a bit, but it was a nice eye-opener. It said, a smile is the universal hello. And it's so true. In every culture, it doesn't matter if you know the language or any of the nuances of the, you know, of the, of the culture. If you smile, that is the universal hello. So you're dealing with somebody's smile. It's a very personal endeavor. If somebody's not happy with their smile, that is enough to not somebody's confidence for life. Very, very easily. You see these cases all the time when patients come in and they almost start apologizing straight away. I'm really sorry, I've got really, really bad teeth. It happens so often that you kind of get used to it, but you do need to realize that for individually, it's such a personal thing. A lot of the time, you know, People hide their smiles, you know, in photos they take, in wedding photos because they're embarrassed about it. A lot of time when people start seeking treatment is around about the times where they associate with happy memories, like weddings and stuff. They say, oh, now is the time to get my teeth done. Because they realize that people get judged very easily just by the state of their teeth. I mean, if you see, and, and I want you to Google this as well, you know, go to footballers before they were famous, you know, look at Cristiano Ronaldo, for example. He didn't have nice, straight, beautiful teeth. You'll often realize, as soon as somebody becomes in the public eye or becomes famous, suddenly they've got really nice teeth a few months later. Is not so surprising. That's the first thing people go for. As in, if they want to change their life or when they start feeling good about themselves and they, they've got that confidence boost or they want a boost, they go for the teeth, they go for the smile. And you'll be dealing with people's smiles every single day. People need to know you're a caring person, you understand that, and they need to know that you are actually there for them. You're not there to judge, you're not there to rush them in and out of the door. You are there to either maintain a beautiful smile or at least make something better than what they walked into the door with. That's the real job. It doesn't matter how technically amazing you are, if someone doesn't trust you, they're not gonna like you, and everything else you've learned technically just goes out the window. You need to be, and it's very easy to say, you need to be a people person, but I think the word I'm really looking for is, you really need to care. Really, really need to care. This is, this is a very personal business. This is not about, you know, who makes the most beautiful fillings, who makes, you know, who's famous on Instagram and all this stuff. This is really, really about who cares the most, because people know. But if you thought this video was useful to you and uh, you're watching, please give me a like or a subscribe just so I know it's not just my mum that's watching these videos anymore. And uh, leave some comments. I really like to hear what you guys think or any experiences that you had. Um, yeah, thank you.